got it. And good morning from Scotty Ray and Candace. As we begin a Friday morning, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Temperatures are starting to warm up a little bit. They are. It looks like it's going to be a real pretty day. Yeah, I am ready for some nice weather. I don't know about everybody else. I don't know if y'all saw the sunrise this morning, but it was beautiful. It was. It had like pink clouds all over, everywhere, and it was real pretty. Oh, it uh, almost kind of looked like, uh, let me see here, where is that at? This picture here is it's coming up over sunsets. and. Oh, yeah, that's so pretty. 47 right now as you start your day there. But uh, just one of those scenes there that makes you step back and go, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. I do. I've got several pictures of the sun coming through, peeking through like a hole in the cloud. It just makes you feel like heaven shining down. It does. You know? I'm, I'm ready for a little heaven, aren't you? <laughs> I am. Look, I am. The weekend is here. We hope you enjoy yourself. Get to if you, and it's going to be a good one. Now, there is a mm -hmm. slight, slight chance of rain tonight, about 20% chance. And then by Saturday, we'll hit a high of about 63, Sunday afternoon 66, but sunshiny all weekend, no problems. Well, that's good. So, I'm looking forward to that. What's your plan today? A lot of haircutting? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I get off today at like 2.30. So, not too bad. I don't have to work all day today. But um, I should be busy while I'm there unless I have a cancellation. And, you know, that can always happen. So, so uh, how many Snicker bars did you sneak on your first day of dieting? <laughs> well, I did not sneak any Snicker bars. But I ate the two, which this sounds so nasty, and it's not my favorite thing. But What's that? I had two boiled eggs and a fruit cup for breakfast and some water. That sounds real appetizing, doesn't it? Um, mm. And then, so that was around eleven by two thirty, I think it was or three. I was starving to death because I had not gotten to go get lunch. Yeah. And so, um, I you know after I picked my son up, he wanted to go to McDonald's, and so I got I stole a French fry, <laughs> and I savored that one French. Fry. <laughs> I think I just want to be fat. <laughs> just look. So when I got back to work, I said. They had gotten Chinese food yesterday yeah. for one of the girls' birthdays. So I said, I don't, I, I've got to eat something. I am starving to death. So I had some noodles of, of all things, these Chinese noodles. <laughs> it was so good, though. Dites are but I, uh, I miserable. A, I had a salad for supper, though, so well, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying, but it's yeah, going to be. A and, you know, the thing about salads is if you do outside work, like you got to go dig some post hole mm -hmm. holes with a post hole digger and you eat a salad, about 15 minutes into that, it's going to be like you ain't never ate nothing. I know. you got to have something sticks to you. Right. <laughs> you do. I mean, you starve. You feel like you're starving. But I, I love salad. It's just preparing it, you know. Yeah. So, but I'm going to get through it. Hang in there. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm going to have to try like a mini diet because I can't, you know, I can't, I can't do without certain things. I need to wire my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> but look, give me a little... I can sip something on a straw or something. Ooh, have you ever, honestly, you know, you said it jokingly. Have you ever seen anybody that had to have their mouth wired shut? No. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah. I, I just thought it was a saying. I didn't <laughs> I didn't know they really did it. Why would they do that? Uh, guy something was like a job. <clears throat> no, a guy was weld, uh, grinding that I saw, mm -hmm. and he was doing with a grinder, and the disc broke and flew off and hit him. And you know what a disc looks yeah, like on him. Yeah. And it went in his mouth there and cut all his teeth out and oh, stopped. Oh, my gosh. It was kind of like make you want to fall out. Oh, gosh. Woo. That would be but, cool. uh, And they had to wire his mouth shut. He had to live mm -hmm. that way. I don't know. Six, mm -hmm. And you have to eat everything out of a straw. Yeah. I felt for that kid. Oh, Lord. That would be awful. It gives me the heebie-jeebies thinking back mm -hmm. on it. I'm sure it gives you the wheelies, too. Yes. That's just... Mm. Many moons ago, but uh, one of those ooh, weird things there. Hey, we want to say good morning to Miss Gail Gafford up in Adam in Porterville, Mississippi. Also, Elmer Talbert is watching this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donna Sue Peebles People says, I uh, hope you two have a wonderful day. We so, hope you all have a wonderful day, too. We, yeah. It looks like it's going to be a really pretty day for people who are home all day. They can get out in the yard and plant some flowers. Right. You know, so. Don't forget uh, tonight, uh, this is coming up out in Wanot, Mississippi. You can head out, and this is going to be the Battle of the States. Tonight is the practice run, and then tomorrow kicks off the 2021 season there for Rodney and everybody there for the 8th Annual Battle of the States. Mm -hmm. That'll be tomorrow night, so come on out. Enjoy yourself. That's uh, tonight, uh, practice run, and the big races are tomorrow night in Wanot, Mississippi. And uh, I had heard from Ricky Bobby this morning. I don't know where he's hiding at. Mm -hmm. We might have to go out there to that. That'd be fun. Oh, it's a ton of fun. So go out and enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, did you notice anything happen in the Capitol yesterday? 
Did I? Yeah. I, no. Yep, that was fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't nothing went down. Well, nothing like the, they expected. The weird thing about all of that is, and if you'll remember back, they never gave a name. They just kept saying, "Probably well, we've got some tips." Well, they mm -hmm. never gave a tip. It, it was, I believe, in my opinion, all made up the entire time to keep troops there to spook everybody. Mm -hmm. There was nobody coming to attack that place. Well, my thing is, if if somebody's going to really attack somebody, why would you give them a date? And, yeah. You know, I mean, I think if somebody was going to do something like that, it would be when they least expect it, which I hope nothing like that ever happens. Again, and I don't, that I don't was call that insurrection what happened last night. How many guns were taken? Yeah, I know. None. I know. None. Absolutely none. There's more insurrection daily from, yeah. the, <laughs> from the people who were supposedly in administration. Now, I hate me. that the Capitol was breached, but I think all of that. And I think most Americans saw mm -hmm. where it was just kind of loosely held, like, come on in and then we'll t we're going to get you later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as we go to some of these things, uh, this is what I bring that up for this point here. Uh, Federal investigators are probing, probing communications in between mega rioters and Congress. What they're trying to tie is that maybe somebody there from the GOP gave some information to somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that happened, neither do you, but uh, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're grasping at straws like they did over Russia for four years. But our vice president, which was not vice president at the time. Correct can go and, and raise money to bail out people who were burning rioting buildings. and burning buildings and causing chaos. And nothing you know. is said. Yeah, nothing, in, no, not a thing done about that. That's okay. Yeah, that, how, how and that left, happened. Yeah, the left is very left-sided. They right? are. They're, you know, they're just one-sided. So, <clears throat> with, and with all that being said, as we all know, nothing happened yesterday mm -hmm. whatsoever. And then this is the headline this morning of, well, they want them to stay the National Guard for another two months. If I was the, the governors of these states, I'd pull them and bring them home. I mean, I, I just think that's what they need, especially the treatment that they've gotten. All that food. All that nasty food from yesterday that we saw. And right. It's just unacceptable. So that's, that's a couple of headlines tied in with that. And let's see here. What is Joe up to? Joe is a, a couple of headlines there. Have you, seen, have you seen this to where the feed was cut off on Biden? I saw a little snippet of where they, they, they had commented about it. But um, I did, well, I did see him talking, and then I thought, I thought it was, um, I thought it was an odd setup. It looked like it was, like, virtual to me. Yeah. It did say, address a virtual. Yeah. And uh, the Recovery Act. All right, them. that is not the right one. Let me F5 that and see if I can get that to reload, and then we'll go back to it and see if we can play that. All right. I saw where Nancy had called him the 45th president. She done that on purpose, didn't she? I don't know if she did, but she's probably, mm, I don't know. For the very first know. time, Joe Biden as president of the United States. And I could, my heart could not be filled with more she's joy to have uh, that occasion marked by introducing him to our House Democratic Caucus. That joy is also uh, increased by being introduced by Angie Craig. She and must I'm have so her glad hands she tied down. She's usually she's her yeah, she's friends, usually. Whom I love yes. hearing about in, and now in front <laughs> of the President of the United States. Thank you, Angie, for your leadership, your she friendship, like the lady and your very sign generous language when she's introduction. You make this evening very okay, special. She, I don't know how long she's going to babble that, but as we get on down here, well, it's, it's going to mess up. It's not wanting to play correctly there evening. to speed forward. But, but what he does, he gets to the end and he asks for, okay, I'm ready to take questions, and the White House just kills the feed. It's over. Mm -hmm. It's the most insane thing that I've ever seen as far as them. You can't even have the president sit there and be asked questions. Yeah, they don't, I mean, they don't want him to. Yeah, because there's no tell. I'd love to hear what he had to say. He talked about everything but what yeah. he was supposed to. Mm. So I that, just wonder what he remember his president. Would he remember his name? As I've said, it is? you know, before, I think Joe is one of those uh, those people you could ha sit down and have a, a a nice conversation with him, have a cup of coffee, and find you have a lot of things that you both like and talk about. But as far as policies, and you you wouldn't walk away with going, "That's my president." Yeah. But <clears throat> that's what we got for now. Mm. Uh, that's cruel to me, though. What they're doing and have done is cruel. I mean, that's 
But with all of this, it's like it's a game. With this, you watch him do things that aren't right, and he stumbles around. Is this part of the, what they're up to here, of them stripping the powers to where he mm -hmm. cannot uh, command the, the military, and it would go back over to Congress to be the only ones to be able to make that decision? I don't know. Are you saying that he might be faking it? No, that he's really got problems. And oh, they're yeah. letting him go well, and show the American public he's got issues to where they can mm -hmm. take power away I'll from take him. Issue, I, I have an issue with his wife. I mean, what kind of a, a wife would allow their husband to be taken advantage of like that? Well, because that's what they're doing. But she wanted to be him to be president to go well, down Well, I mean, history. I understand that, but that's still ridi it's cruel. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, I'm not saying the man's a great you know, stand-up guy. I'm not saying that, but I just, I think that's awful that you would, and especially, I mean, one of the main, people in the main limelight right now having that kind of an issue, that's just cruel. But me. you don't want the President of the United States not being able to call a shot if somebody attacks us in the middle of the night that he's got to call 50 other people. I he's know. got to be able to make that decision if we need to retaliate and do it now in secrecy right. so nothing will slip out. And Congress taking those powers away, whoever the president is. Uh -huh. you know, but not. if he gets us into a war or if we started any kind of a war, the, I, it's my understanding that if something like that happened, they can't just... Well, they, if it was they, during they, election year at the end uh -huh. of it there and we're at war, he would remain in, from my understanding of it, until that war was settled where somebody else new didn't mm -hmm. come in. And I wonder, could they pull him out, though, at the time being, like if something like that happened? Could they pull him in the midst 25th, of that? The 25th, I don't know. So I don't know. He will never make it that far. I, mean, I don't I think, think we all know that. I don't think this year will um, end with him being president. They they already have a strategy set up. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. I've heard, you know, two years at most. We'll see, he could surprise us now. He it's, could. It, oh, my goodness. And, uh, you know, there's so many of them. Trump, you got to give him credit on this. We never went to war. Yeah. And they all claimed that the moment he took office, he would get us in war. He didn't. But mm -hmm. we're inching closer and closer each day. Yeah, it's scary. It really is. It, it, it scares me, to, like I've said a million times, I feel like, that, that my son's about to go into, you know. Now, is um, he at uh, basic this. training yet? No, he. I think he leaves in June. I think it's when, well, that's a tentative date, you know, I don't know. And then you all um, get to go to the graduation and do all that. Yeah, supposedly. And I don't know how all that goes with the COVID stuff going on because I know. Oh, um, yeah. It I know that virtual. it was. Yeah, I know it was something um, when it was the people who graduated, like right at the beginning of all the COVID stuff. I, I don't think people could go. So I hope that changes because I'd, I'd love to be there. Yeah, um, sure. But anyway, um, yeah, it worries me, though. Um, if we were to go to to war, or God forbid anything happen on on our soil, you know. And well, there's there's plenty of people that want to do things to us. We all know that. Oh, well, I know. And but to have these people in charge, that's scary to me. We'll see. But you know, a lot of them do want war for contracts, and you know, so it's a money maker for the country and their friends. Just saying, and I think everybody's aware of that mm -hmm. of what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, Lawanda said he doesn't have a clue what he's doing. And yep. uh, Milton said, I think she's drunk. Yep. You're, you said what I was thinking. Of uh, Nancy. Nancy, Nancy mm -hmm. does give that stuttered. Oh, she sounds like she's got a mouthful of cotton balls when she's trying to talk. And how old is Nancy now? 80, 81? She's um, old enough to be retired. <laughs> she ain't going peacefully. <laughs> She's one of them, almost like uh, Geese. How, how do you pronounce that lady's name? Geesebrick. That was the uh, Ginsburg. Supreme. Ginsburg. Ginsburg. Isn't that right? Ginsburg. Yeah. So uh, I don't know who makes Nancy's masks, but she needs to fire them and get her a new mask maker. <laughs> Ugh, they're awful. So that's a little bit of what's going on in Washington. If you hadn't kept up with Trump lately, uh, they're saying that Trump will probably run again, but he ain't gonna have Mike with him. Yeah, I, w I would not think he'd be the first choice. They had some issues there, and then they say he's mulling over of having a woman on the ticket with him. Well, who is the, is it the South Dakota lady? No, I like her. She's really good. She would be a good running mate if, if he chose a woman. Now, if he chose a man, I think the governor of Florida would be great. Ron DeSantis. I mean, DeSantis. he would be a great, he, he would make a great president, I think. But, like, he would be great to be a vice president, and then once Trump, you know, was done, for him to step in and run for president, I think. I mean, I think he makes a whole lot of sense. 
but I think we're all going to see a woman. Yeah. Uh, because that's mm -hmm. going to become a trend now to where you kind of satisfy mm -hmm. everybody on both sides with a man and a, and a female. I think I that's coming. I didn't realize that the the DeSantis guy was in the military. So I didn't know all that yeah, either. Yeah, he, he has a, a long background. But that was a razor-thin election down there, if you remember, when he got put in. Well, I think he's done a lot, though, for oh, them. And I think they've realized it now, and a lot of the country realizes it. But have you noticed Mississippi's catching a lot of flack, too, about um, our governor has signed a, a thing, you know, about not allowing transgender males to compete in women's sports. In Mississippi, I, you know, it's it's almost like it, it's it almost, and I'm not running Tate down. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. it's you know he found a spine somewhere, or is it somebody else telling him what to do? Because Tate has not been one of those that have been a stand up guy to face. Mm -hmm. This is the first time nationwide that he's kind of took a stand, drew a line, well, and it's good. Well, I, I commend just, you. Maybe he's just like all of us, though. He's reached this this had enough. point and i've had enough and i don't care how much you rant and rave and whatever i ain't i ain't giving in maybe i hope he's come to that point because wow. like i wish we'd have kept our flag but you know that's neither here nor you there you lied so, to us right? you lied to us there, but, um, but you know i have to say good job that was on the this. beginning yeah that was the beginning we said you know that's you give in one time and you're gonna keep on you know that's right but um i do commend him though for making that decision because i think that men do not need to be in women's sports. It's going to ruin it uh, for, for ladies, period. Right. I and mean, it, 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 everybody is so scared to speak up on these issues nowadays. Mm -hmm. They are. And I, I don't know why. What are you, I mean, I know that you're going to take flat. Well, but, financial ruin. Yeah. Uh, like if you own a business, you get boycotted by everybody. You get yeah. put in national media. Don't spend money with them. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, and then true friends, you really find out who your friends are when the chips are down. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody knows that. I think things, though, right now are so, so crazy out of whack, you know. They and, are. And the things that, that people would be standing up for, I think, are the right things. You know, I don't think there's enough people out there that would not agree with them for standing at the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, even if it was a boycott, I mean, I don't think the people who would be boycotting would be overruling how many would be for the I, right thing. I, I get what you you're saying. What saying. Right. But they so, have taken down many companies. These, these, oh, I know. And Twitter is known for it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, they jump on a company and try to tear it apart if you do this and demand. You know, who's the little guy that was on The Bachelor? He's going to be on some... Is it Good Morning America? Oh, he's going to try. Yeah, Chris. he's going to try to explain his stance on all of that. Mm -hmm. He just wants his eight million dollars a year back. Yeah. Can you imagine making Probably. eight million a year? Mm. It's good money. I know there's a lot of people that do make that. It's just yeah. nobody in my circle. Yeah. <laughs> nobody. So a lot of people trade their soul for fame all the time, though, and give in and just. Yeah, they go to that crossroads there in the Delta, and once you go to that crossroads, there's no backing up. If you trade your soul for something, you can't come back. Yeah. Just remember that money ain't everything. Mm -hmm. so you with me on that? Yeah, I know. So we uh, we pray for our governor. We do. And uh, we, we do hope that uh, Tate can make the right decisions when it comes to these things. Right, because, I mean, I think the, the mask mandate thing was a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I think this, this transgender decision thing, that was two good things. So let's hope there's more good things. But, yeah. uh, you know, as, as we all see it, um, cities that are run by Democrats – Mm -hmm. across Mississippi still have not removed those mass mandates. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to hold on to that as long as they can instead of fully opening up. But we are getting there. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, and then, you know, it, it gets in. I know a lot of people ask me, okay, if the governor says do this, how can a city go, oh, we're not doing that? I don't have all the answers. Yeah. I, I don't know who overrules I, who. I don't know either. I'm not deep enough into the politics to know those things. And if you know that, let me know. Yeah, let us know because we. I, I've asked that question several have, times in the last. I'm going to have to get educated on a few things there when it comes to the governments, and I've just uh -huh. never been heavily involved in that. But I think it's high time maybe I learn more because this has done got serious. Well, I was thinking about this the last several days. There's so many people who, you know, I'll ask, and which I probably shouldn't bring up politics when I'm working, but you know, I'm, it's it. me, and I'm going to. <laughs> I don't know. I just I, I am. I mean, because it really concerns me, and these are things that. That do concern me um, because politics have a lot to do with a lot of things, even like prayer in school and all that Correct. Kind of stuff. So, um, but it amazes me at the people that I'll say, "Have you been keeping up with the news? You know, have you been keeping up what's going on in Washington?" And they're like, "No, I ain't listening to that junk." 
I don't care. I don't even watch it. And I'll bring up a comment, and they're like, like, I mean, just anything about one of these bills that's been signed, and they have no idea what's going on. Well, America has gotten to a point to where, you know, I'm just going to stay in my corner, and I'm not fooling with that anymore. I don't want to hear about it, but it's out there, and you do need to know. Well, you're going to look like a deer in the headlights when some major things go down, and you, you don't you don't see it coming. Right. You know, you're not going to see it coming. So, I mean, as bad as it may be and as aggravating as it is, you would do yourself a service <laughs> and your family to keep up with what's going on. I mean, I'm not saying sit there 24 hours a day with the news on. Just you know, know what's happening. D- know what's happening and, and educate yourself about certain things because if you don't really stay on top of things and you don't look into things, um, you'll miss it and you'll be like, What's going on? Like, why have I not got... Here's a prime know. example of, of the way America has turned out. Uh, you, you've got a group that hollers about illegal aliens being locked up at the border. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe they're putting some form of a jail cell for a few days, and they, they hoop and holler over that. But in the yeah. next breath, they're for killing an unborn child. Right. I, I, don't, I don't understand how you can rationalize those two things, to, to complain about a child being locked up here, but you're willing to kill it before it's born and well, it is murder yeah and people claim that oh well it's not born yet so it's not really considered you know yeah, like, it is. like look if this baby can suck we were talking yesterday me and a customer of mine um we're talking about um i think their grandbaby or something was a sonogram picture and he was sucking his thumb uh-huh. you're gonna tell me that this child is in the womb sucking its thumb and it is not consider- considered a living being and it is. What is wrong with America that thinks that's okay, you know, to, to kill something like that? that it is. It's murder. Absolutely. It's murder by choice. I mean, that's exactly what it is. I don't care, you know. Who, what, or how you say it. Right. Pence finally uh, makes a, uh, a, a, a comment that says, well, there were some irregularities in the election. This mm-hmm. is the first time that he's even made mention that it, mm, something might have went awry with it. Yeah. He's uh, before just been mum on the subject, so... I don't know whether he's trying to think down the road of running for another office and is trying to make himself look better. Mm-hmm. It, there's a reason behind that he done that. Yeah. Uh, make no mistake. Uh, let's see here. Do you remember, we talked about this a little bit earlier this week, one of the days, about New York and how it's kind of unsafe now. Back in the, the, the era before Rudy Giuliani took over, mm-hmm. it was, um, you'd get, there was murder, crime, and everything had graffiti over it. Uh-huh. Let's take a look at what's New York looking like now. This is it. It's, it's overrun by graffiti all over it. We're mm-hmm. back to before Giuliani took over. Look at this. And they think people are going to come spend their vacations yeah. there, uh, grow their companies. It, it's going downhill quickly as we look at these pictures of New York. It's just We can't let this group of people, whoever they are, and I don't know who they are, run our countries and our cities like this and make them look like this. Well, it's a prime example of people who are now sitting in Washington or wherever who have all the authority to possibly do something about stuff like this. Um, They're just sitting there lining their pockets pretty much and just letting things go by the wayside. Like, we're not worried about what goes on everywhere else as long as we're happy right here in our little place. But you Um, see these pictures, don't you? That's horrible. It just goes on and on with what has happened. I mean, it's just, why would you want to... It's defacing uh, America is what right. this is. Look at that. Mm-hmm. And nothing is being, you have to arrest people who break the law. Yeah. You cannot slap somebody on the hand, turn them out, turn them loose 30 minutes, or not even stop them, period. Yeah. This is, this is going to be the end of America if this continues, well, of the way we know it, I guess is the way to word that. Well, I mean, just at, like in one of our local cities the other day, they had defaced Something at a park, had they not? Rode all over this building. Did you see that? I missed that. Oh, yeah. I think I want to say it was in Neshoba County, but I might be wrong. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was at They rode um, all over the building. At yeah. The park, you know? Yeah, up I mean, at um, just were, north. Yeah, they were looking for somebody to maybe if somebody knew something about it to call it in. But yeah, I hope they find who did that. I mean, because it's a, it's a shame. Yeah, they wrote cuss money, words on it. Right. And a lot of, you know, awful things on it. But I mean, it's a shame because these buildings are not cheap to build. No. And it's a, you know, it's a nice place for children. Like this was at, a, I think, at a ballpark or somewhere. Yeah, I'm not it real is. sure, but, um, you know. I was going to look up the, the name. And, and I know this from the top of my head. I don't know why I can't remember. And uh, that's going to have to um, regenerate. 
that ain't working right yet. Mm. But um, yeah, I I miss the days of people appreciating the towns that they live in and trying to keep them really. Burnside um, is where that was. Okay. Okay, so it wasn't in Neshaba, right? Yes. Yeah, no, is that no, in Neshaba? Yeah. Okay, I'm up sorry. Up in that area there. I don't so. know. My city's well. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Oh, I hate it happened. There, there's no other way to word that. Yeah. But maybe they're going to catch him. I hope so. Nice. Neshaba County uh, got a good sheriff, so uh, maybe so. Have you seen this of the pastor who's being slammed this morning? Um, no. Now, no. you know... It's kind of like when we were talking the other day about sinning, and you go, well, I've got sins in my life, too. Well, everybody too. does, yeah. But this pastor seems to realize that, well, maybe he doesn't have any. But mm. he's slamming ladies for being overweight and calling them, don't be looking butchered, mm. when he looks like that. Mm. He did say that she was kind of smoking hot, and I have yeah. to agree with him on that. But you yeah, you're going you're gonna to look like you've had several happy meals a day. and um, Yeah, you can't do that. Kill other people to lose weight. Mm. Uh, you know what's the old thing about calling the, the pot, calling yeah. the kettle black? You, yeah. you, you can't do that. Uh, we, we've all got sin there, and apparently you've been eating a few hamburgers there yourself, mm-hmm. there, brother. I know. Yeah, <laughs> you missed a meal. So maybe you suspect your spouse is fooling around on you. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're not sure. Then you get a call from the police that says, "Hey, your spouse has been erect, and they got this woman up in the car with them." Mm. That bad would be way bad. to find it out. That would be bad. So, well, we'll get to a bigger problem later on of, of another story. But uh, that... Uh, yeah, that would kind of... And I, and I told Candace, it reminded me, who all remembers uh, the Porter Wagner song, The Carroll County Accident? Yeah. Same theory of uh-huh. what happened to that. Dad was having a little uh, rendezvous there and uh, got killed in a car wreck, and they had to cover it up so Mom wouldn't know. Mm. But there's always been a lot of Carroll County accidents out there. What's that Garth Brooks song, The Thunder Roll? Yeah. That was kind of <laughs> strong song. Yeah, she was there. waiting. Yeah, she was. <laughs> That'd be me. I'd be waiting. Walked in that per- uh, and, a, and a woman's got <clears throat> a sense of smell uh, bigger than anybody. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, bloodhound. I remember, I, and I forget where I was one night. Uh, this, this, she was probably 79, 80, somewhere between 79 and 85 years old that mm-hmm. hugged my neck one night. I was somewhere. And I come in and I had lipstick down my collar. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and I was trying to explain that and it didn't go well. Mm, I, I can imagine that would not go very well. Yeah. Things, I'm one of those that it can just happen to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the disbelief in her eyes? I saw, I saw that little, <laughs> no, that little look. No, of, I don't believe I'm just it. thinking, I, I can't imagine. As a wife, like, yeah, that would be. And then one time, there was that time when I was a milkman, Mm -hmm. many, many moons ago. And uh, I had left a job and they gave me a gag gift. Mm -hmm. And so I just threw it under the seat of my truck. Yeah. I didn't think anything about it. You didn't open it? Well, yeah, I knew what it was, but Uh, I I, I didn't think. It was a gag gift again. And I was looking for something and I said, Angie, will you get it out of my truck? Well, she comes back in with this pair of panties and. Oh, Lord. (laughs) <laughs> and it was a gag gift, Woo. And, and, you know. And she's and you're trying yeah. to go. Well, that's not. But it looks bad. But I. Yeah, that would look. That would not look good. I have always just accidentally, especially under the seat of the truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good lord. Bathroom scene. I went into a. a you a, have bad luck. That went into bad a, luck. Oh, I topped that one. I went into a bathroom one time, and uh, I was getting ready to walk out. I was washing my hand, and a and a lady stumbled <laughs> into the bathroom, and. Uh, she was confused where she may have had a little bit to drink. Oh. And she was confused what as where she was. was <laughs> no, yeah, I said, this probably doesn't look good. I said, I'm going to walk out of here and this will be okay. And I opened the door. There's Angie there. And I said, come on, we got to go. And then here she come out. And I couldn't explain how she was in the bathroom. Oh, goodness. It, it, yeah. You know, yeah. That's the worst look, Scotty Wright. Did you believe me? I believe you. Okay. Yeah, I believe you. Do y'all see? I'm trying to look in her eye here. I, I do. I believe you. Okay. That's bad luck, though. <laughs> but I've had a run. You might or might not have an ex <laughs> on you. So now I've just stopped going anywhere, and I don't get into any trouble. <laughs> yeah, you just stay at home. I stay and do weather stay stuff. Stay at the house. Yeah, I can't get into no trouble up here talking about where a thunderstorm is. That's right. So there you go on that. We think. Let's see. <laughs> we think. So Ain't no telling. Did you ask for anything for your wedding? No, I didn't. I didn't expect gifts and all that, no. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, this couple expected But, I mean, we did bit. get some things. I'm very appreciative of it. Yeah, I'm I sure. Did. Yeah. A toaster and things like that. Uh-huh. Did you get a toaster? No, we didn't get a toaster. 
Um, I will say though, um, <clears throat> Kathy that t- that commented on here, Kathy, she got you an iron board. No, they got us a beautiful crystal bowl. I love it. Mm. Um, it's really pretty, really pretty. There's some so. people though that want specific things, and they mm-hmm. just go ahead and tell you what they want for the wedding. And this couple included it on their invitation. Give us money. So. <laughs> <laughs> Our bank account is in debt. And I we wanna... would like it to go back into credit. Really? Yeah. I would never, ever do that. But, Please uh, visit the ATM. We know you're a gym. <laughs> that is not right. That's crazy. <clears throat> that is, uh, is that somebody who's privileged? Would you call it that? I don't know. That maybe right. he's never had to work for a living? I would never. That is so tacky to me. But they got all tacky on that. I, I just, you know, right. some, somebody's mama needs to call him and straighten yeah. him out, or grandma. Yeah. Mm. I wonder how many guests showed up. Probably nobody. I, I, I wouldn't it. even go on if somebody sent me something like that. I agree with you. That's crazy. Let's see. Uh, Kathy Bounce says, uh, thanks for standing up for women's sports. Women have rights. They do yes. have rights. They do. I mean, they do. And it and for, like, high school girls who are looking to get scholarships and stuff, this puts, a uh, you know, a damper on their ability to get a scholarship. And let's talk about locker rooms. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. mean, yeah. doesn't that cause a whole, open up a whole other can? It does. It does. There's no, they shouldn't have um, men or and boys it goes back to the up in the locker room. bathroom thing. Do you remember when the mm-hmm. NBA was boycotting cities because they wouldn't allow men to go into women's bathrooms? What? Mm-hmm. When did sports figures start making the decisions for middle America? I know. Mmm, gets my bowl, my blood rising there. Yeah. I almost said that wrong, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it will make your blood boil. I mean, it makes me very upset. Good morning to uh, Joyce Poole. Good morning. Have a good day. We appreciate that. We do. Uh, Carolyn Knight says, that is why we're in the mess we're in. Keep up uh, with what they are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Northside Park. Okay. okay. I said that wrong. Northside Park is just on the other side of Philadelphia is where that happened. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I think we played ball there, some kind of ball there one time. This is a nice place. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carolyn said, uh, Pence is a coward. Mm, call him out. Uh, Linda Jane says, if they had a mama like I had, she had a switch and wasn't scared to use it. My grandma had a switch. Goes back to your she family, a, your upbringing. She had a switch bu- a bush at the end of the driveway. It like just had them all, you know. So we did, called it the switch bush. Did you have to go down and get your own switch? We had switch? to go cut our own switch when we did something we wasn't supposed to do. And that was the longest walk from the end of that driveway and back. Take as long as and, you could. Yeah, and if you thought you were doing yourself a service by getting the smallest one, you're wrong, because that's the ones that hurt the worst. <laughs> and little keen switches. With, yeah. And she, all she had to do was just tap your ankles, like, you know. It felt like fire shooting across your leg. I'll be dog. I miss it. But it got our attention. I bet we didn't do that again. Yeah, it does. And that's what it yeah. takes in America. You've got to be corrected. And so many Americans, for whatever reason, don't want to correct their children. <clears throat> and without mm-hmm. correction, you don't know right from wrong. Right. Did I spend too much time on that? No. I, I mean, to me, that's that's the case. I pulled my car over many times now when my kid's fighting in the back seat or kicking the back of the seat or something. If I had told you one time or whatever, don't be doing that. And, I mean, I'd pull over and I didn't care. I'd cut me a switch, <laughs> put it right next to my seat. Look, my daughter, it's a funny thing. She'd probably pop on here if she was watching and go, that's the truth. Or I'd have one on top of the refrigerator. I u- rarely did I ever have to use a switch. I mean, and some people think that's so cruel. That's so wrong. No, well, you know not. what? <laughs> no, it ain't. No. But I I mean, I'm not talking about, I don't think people should like beat their children, but children need a little bit of discipline every now and then. You I mean, just sitting to. there going, I'm going to put you in timeout. You know, timeout doesn't do a whole lot. That is recharge <clears> time. Do you hear me? Recharge. They charging up for the next little incident in about five minutes after you let them get up, you know. Um, but I talked to my kids. I didn't holler at them all the time. When I mean, and like I said, I rarely ever had to like use anything. Right. I would just go to get it if they knew that I meant business, Woo. you know. But, Carolyn Knight says but, that Angie is the luckiest woman in the world. She is. I appreciate she you is. saying that. Okay, maybe she said it a little yeah. different. <laughs> Well, she is. I mean, both of y'all are sweet. Oh, my heavens. Let's see here what else is going on. Have you seen where the uh, the Moonshiners guy has passed away that was on Moonshiners? I've watched that off and on, not steady every time. Mm. But uh, this guy here that worked next to his dad has passed away. Now, they have not given a cause of death. And if you look at the headline there, mm-hmm. uh, Lance Waldrop, he was 30 years old. Mm. 
but uh, could have been many things that happened to him. But it does mention down there that he had had some issues with drug and alcohol abuse. Yeah. We don't know. Hmm. But uh, that's in the headlines this morning. And I saw that a day or so ago, and I was waiting for it to tell more about it, and it doesn't look like the, the family is going to release much information about that is why I hadn't gone there yet. So, wow. Hmm. Let's take a minute to talk about Chet. Have you been out to Chet's Paint and Body lately? Chet will take care of you. If you've got an automobile that's got a scratch, a dent, that's what Chet does here in Center Hill. He'll take care of you. Chet has one of the most state-of-the-art uh, places does excellent work and let's take yes. a look at some of this uh, this is a before and after here of a car a gto mm -hmm. that was damaged on the front it's a pretty car yeah uh, as we go through these and look here here's a ford truck that got a side swipe there on that front fender mm -hmm. can't hardly tell it and uh, uh gmc they got it on the front as you go through here here's another one there you got of course you got to have your dog in the picture there yes, but there's a little it. i think that's their dog oh yeah there's a little dent right there on the fender there and it's fixed mm -hmm. you can't tell it ever happened mm -hmm. Door damage fixed. Mm -hmm. See Chet; he can take care of you. He really can, and I'm, you know, they're they do things in a timely manner. Yeah, um, they're always there if you need them, and do excellent work. They've worked on several of my vehicles, you know, because I had a run in with a deer a couple of times, <laughs> and well, actually three times. Several times. Yeah, and then last year when a log truck hit us from in the rear. Fixed you up. They fixed it. They did. And and of course, you know, one of the big things is a lot of times you'll see a, a car that's been painted and it doesn't match. Uh -huh. It doesn't happen that way at Chet's. Everything's going to come out. It's going to look great. That's right. See Chet's Paint and Body. You can call him at 737-2961, and he'll help you get going there exactly what you need. The good people that you can trust. Yeah, so. and there's uh, there's not many people that you go, I trust this person. Well, they are somebody that you can truly, truly trust. You can. You really can. Let's see here what else we've got going on this morning. Let's uh, let's see what went on. The, oh, this is, this is you know, how, how America got to a boiling <laughs> point, and this was that point to where the Boston Massacre happened on this day in 1770. Mm -hmm. And it started out, if you don't know much about history, they were, uh, the British were, you know, telling everybody what to do. A group uh -huh. of colonists showed up. They threw a snowball at the British. The next thing you know, the British shoot them, shoot into the crowd, killed at least five people. And well, mm -hmm. they say that's really how the Revolutionary War began, was from that point. Mm -hmm. But it's like I said, people can take a little bit yep. too much and they're, Done. This was a, a a day that will probably be remembered forever. The day that uh, the plane went down that had uh, Patsy Cline on it, along with uh, Hank Shaw Hawkins and also uh, Cowboy Copas. Mm -hmm. uh, 1963, that plane went down and killed uh, all of them. And, of course, the uh, the pilot, as you see the newspaper where it says four Opry stars, one of them was a songwriter that was the pilot of the plane when it crashed. A horrible, horrible scene. Uh, Patsy uh, has been missed. And I meant to call you last night to see if you'd bring one of these up here this oh, morning. Hey. Oh, Lord. Can you I, do them? No, I am not a, I, I've never been able to do it. It'd go like once or twice and then hit the ground. I can't do them. You can't? And my daughter, my oldest daughter, I, if I can't, I think she's the one that, yeah, could hula hoop. You know, she was really good at it. 1963, they came out, and it's been a sensation since. You don't see them as much now, mm -hmm. but that was the thing back in the 60s. If you go back and look at pictures, everybody was doing it. Is yeah. it belly dancing make you better at it? You I don't know. The... I think if you have a figure that is more like hourglass, yeah. <laughs> I think it probably will stay in the center <laughs> a little bit better. Mine's like this, so no. But I've seen people that could do two or three at one time. Oh, yeah. and make on their them... arm and leg. Yeah. I don't see how they do it. There's talented people in this world. Yeah, I'm not that coordinated. Way back in the day, this was a big album. Uh, I don't as much. He's gone left since he come out with this. But Steve Earle released Guitar Town on this day, and it was a huge album. So mm -hmm. six million copies, and it was quite like a uh, kind of like a cornerstone there for a while of a, a new artist and how well he done Guitar Town. Everybody remembers that. Let's see here what else went on on this date here. Uh, oh yeah, it was 1980. That we all went back and goes, golly, that was a good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Coal Miner's Daughter debuted on this day in 1980. Sissy Spacek, y'all, is a wonderful actress. She played it, didn't she? She did. She is so good. I mean, you would never know that she did not have that accent. Yeah. I mean, she was so Boo. good at it. Yeah. <laughs> that girl was country. I need to go back and watch that. That's the best movie. To this day, it still is. She goes, sound like a big old buyer up in here. <laughs> <laughs> but did she also play... Um, in that movie, Christine, did she do one of those movies um, like that? What was it? Um, it was a spook show, wasn't it? 
the one where they dumped the blood all yeah, over. Yeah, Carrie. Carrie, yes. That was, I remember watching that when I was little, and it scared me to death. I know. It was awful. But, yeah, they had pig blood, and they had it. She was standing up on the stage. And they, they had, pulled They it. made fun and, like, made her the queen of the prom or something. Yeah. And they did it so they could dump the blood on her. It was awful. Just mean. And, but she had, like, she got back at him, I think. She did. It was, bad. Woo. it was 1982, and I think we all remember this guy mm-hmm. from either the Blues Brothers or Saturday Night Live. He passed away, and of course, it, it was drug induced. John Belushi passed away on this day. Remember Animal House? Yeah. Yes. Gosh, that was so funny. Yeah, it was funny. I probably shouldn't have been watching it when I was little, but I did. <laughs> I remember him on that ladder trying to sneak over. You know, he was moving it down, trying to look in the window on the girls. Yeah. That, but, that was a lot of shenanigans went on in that movie. It was. Yeah. Funny, though. I enjoyed that. Uh, it was 1983 that CMT launched on this day. Mm. And for some reason, I'm thinking in my head that did it originally start as the Nashville Network and then, then it became CMT? I think so. Um, what was the guy's name? I, I'm always asking. I need to have this, you know. The guy who did the little show. Well, you know, they had the Nashville a, Network. You know, it was Ralph Nashville Emery. Now or something. Na- Ralph Emery? Yeah, yeah, Ralph Emery. We used to watch him all the time when it had the shotgun red. Shotgun on there. red. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they even started out there to where they had a morning video show that was maybe live at some point there to where okay. they'd done videos and talked about what was going on uh, during the day. Yeah. Uh, I know you had this CD because you still got it and you listen to it daily. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson was number one in 83 with Billie Jean. Yes. That's my girl. Yeah, we have the CD. We have all of his, even when he was a kid, those songs, you know. And if you don't think you like Michael Jackson, play 15 seconds of Michael Jackson and then find any modern country station and turn it on for 15 seconds and see which one you like better. Yeah. (laughs) Because Michael Jackson's better than that garbage coming out of uh, Nashville nowadays. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Let's see here. Uh, 2000, his life changed forever. MC Hammer quit being a performer and became a preacher. Now, he had $50 million saved and went through it all, blew it, had nothing, mm-hmm. uh, turned his life around. And he was really a good guy. Yeah. So, those pants, those MC Hammer pants. Did you have some Hammer pants? No. You did. I, I, I wore Levi's and uh, flannel shirts, mm-hmm. and I still do. I, don't, I didn't have any of those either, but um, it was my, my oldest son. But I remember son, kids having them. My oldest son come in one night. He had on, like, some kind of pants that he had gotten. And they kind of, they weren't that bad, but they kind of hung down like in the middle. Like they looked kind of like hammerish, fitting. hammerish looking pants. <laughs> and I was like, those are like MC Hammer pants. And he <laughs> said, what? And I said, you don't know who MC Hammer is? You could probably backdate pictures to my seventh grade pictures and I look the same as I did at clothes wise. <laughs> I just, you know, I've, I've never been a person to follow trends. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I kind of marched to my own beat. Well, Whether that's good or and, and my bad. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. It was uh, 2009. Taylor Swift made her acting debut on uh, CSI Miami. Mm. Uh, I want to say 20 million people tuned in to watch that that night. Okay. I missed that one, I, I guess. did, too. I didn't realize that CSI had so many country artists. They've had uh, Rascal Flats and a few yeah. others appear on there. I didn't know that. I did not either. Uh this is a pretty woman, uh, and mm. I can't think of a single movie she's been in. I'm, I'm, she was in Fast and the Furious. That's right. Yeah. She was. She, she was, was the, the girlfriend of uh, Paul, whatever his name Yeah, was. they got killed. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, she, yeah, they were kind of girlfriends. She, she was dating one of the bad guys. Yeah. But she was an undercover. Wasn't she undercover uh, She was undercover. Yeah. Great show, though. Mm-hmm. But uh, she was born in 74 on this. Do you pronounce that Mendez? Uh-huh. I'm getting better at these other names, y'all. Y'all give me time. I'll know something here before long. <laughs> now, you've seen people on video calls before, mm-hmm. and I guess if you got it in a the stand, there's nothing wrong with it, having it here and talking and driving. But if yeah. you're holding the phone and you're weaving all over the road, yeah. it becomes a problem. Cops notice this on a Utah mom. Mm-hmm. They pull her over for doing that, and then come to find out they get deeper involved. She's been drinking, and she's got cocaine and a few oh. other things up in the car. Lord. Somebody had to come pick the children up. Yeah, I would imagine so. That would be bad. I think, think. Mm-hmm. 19 years old. You, you, you shouldn't even know about those things yet, in my opinion. Yeah. This makes uh, the Bobbit thing almost look, well, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> um, mild. This guy comes home, catches his wife in the act 
of having an affair with the neighbor. Both couples are married. He doesn't do anything at that point. Mm. He's mad at the old boy. He waits about three weeks and comes home, gets a gun, walks over to the guy's house and marches him to his bedroom, makes him strip, and then takes a pair of scissors and... Mm. And they Lorena cannot, ain't got nothing on him. And they cannot reattach it. So That's he's awful. having issues of going to the restroom now, and mm. uh, his love life has been cut short in the bedroom with his <laughs> his own wife. His love life's been cut short. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a that's a no pun is intended. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> but <laughs> ooh, Lord, look, this is bad. Though. Oh, it's hard. I mean, I wonder what kind of jail time you get for that. Uh, let's see here. He's getting. He's facing twenty years. Oh, he's been sentenced to twenty years. Mm, now he'll probably be out in, what six months the way things go now. Well, I'd be willing to bet there ain't too many men that would mess with him up in prison. No, no. Don't you know you think they no. probably steer clear him? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He might be stealing a knife from the cafeteria. That is a uh, whoo. <laughs> That's awful. Now, if you thought you were going to get some stimulus money and you make over eighty thousand dollars, think again. Joe has slashed it. If you make more than eighty thousand, you're not getting it. You don't get anything? I don't think you get nothing right? now, mm-hmm. if I'm understanding this correctly. Let's see. What and is it? And then married couples is 160 Okay. But as an individual, if you make $80,000, that's the line. Okay. Well, so. that's kind of not right to me. Yeah, I don't gonna, know. I mean, I don't want When I say it's not right, what if it's a married guy that makes 80000 or a woman that makes 80000 and then they're, you know... Um, well, combined, you can make 160 I know. I know, but like... I don't understand why if somebody. But you can be a single. I mean, if you, you eighty got eighty thousand. But if you got five or 80. six kids and you make eighty thousand dollars, you ain't making much. Yeah, that's right. Because between the house note feeding and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all know what I mean by I that. I do know what you mean. Yeah. It uh, it takes a lot to uh, feed and dress a bunch of kids. You know, and I I don't know if I addressed this yesterday. There's so many things that are so crazy right now in Washington. I mean. We've got people that get checks every month that don't work at all. Okay. Never have. Don't work at all. And then we've got people that are elderly working at Walmart. Trying to make ends meet. Trying to make ends meet and just be able to buy their medicine every day. What is wrong with this picture? It's crazy to me. I mean, people who are elderly people who need to be retired, enjoying life, you know, and they don't, they don't get that. They don't have any help. My, it's so uh, aggravating to me. And a lot of folks know my remember my grandmother, Miss Elsie May Hughes. Uh, she lived uh, right past where it's a different name now, where Reed's mm-hmm. Grocery is, where the fork is. Yeah. She lived up there on the right, and of course, my grandmother. She was the sand bottle lady in Meridian for years, who who had a uh, flea market mm-hmm. out on Eleven and Eighty, where all those motels are. But if you remember the the uh, the sand bottle lady, that was my grandmother. Uh, I want to say her Social Security check <clears throat> was. Five hundred and ten dollars a month. Uh, she couldn't get any assistance from mm-hmm. anything that she tried, and she never had running water one day of her life. And she she somehow made it. Bless her heart. Mm-hmm. She was a good woman, but she was one of those that needed help that that never got it. And yeah. uh, that's rough to be without water. Just uh, horrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she never had it though. Her her entire life, she never had that luxury. And uh, I- she's been dead now probably twenty years or so. Well, I, I definitely, there are people who, who need help. Oh, yeah. Mean, there's definitely people who need help. Um, but to me, if somebody has a sound mind and a sound body to be able to do work and they're young enough where they can work. Correct. They need to be working. They don't need to be getting something for nothing. And I don't care who you are. I don't care. But there's been know. a generation of taught not yeah, to Well, work. it's been called, it's been, it's, it's turned into a way of life instead Correct. of a, a help. It, to me, if you get assistance and, and you're able to work and you are on assistance, you should only get it for a certain period of time. And you bring that up, and, and let me say this. If you want a good movie, this weekend, if you want mm-hmm. something that kind of teaches you a lesson and enjoy a good movie, have you ever watched Cinderella Man? No. That is the most incredible. The, the guy is a boxer. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Russell Crowe plays the part, mm-hmm. and he's a boxer, and the depression hits. Okay. Loses everything he's got. I mean, everything. They have six children. Uh, they get down to where they have nothing to eat, uh-huh. and he has to go on welfare. And this is a true story. Yeah. And at the end of it, when he gets back on his feet, he goes back and repays every dime that was given to him while he was on welfare. Mm-hmm. It's just a touching story of what the family went through. But if you want to feel good, uh-huh. watch that movie. I'm telling you, it is great. Yeah. I mean, I, I need to look at, watch that because... Um 
I need a good movie to watch. That but, is. It'll make you feel good there. There's a lot of people who are working just trying to make ends meet. I know. I've been one of them. Yeah. I've been one of them. I was a single mother after I got a divorce, um, and I don't know how I did it. And, and Kurt says a lot of times, I don't know how you did it. Um, but you just juggle things. You learn to juggle things, and uh, I wasn't in a position where I could take a second job. And then when I had Alden, I definitely wasn't in a position where I could take a second job because... He was so small, and you I had, had to, to have there. somebody to watch. Yeah, I had to have somebody watch him. But I know that there's so many, um, like it's it's a hard time that people are going through, and yep. I, I think it's sad when you are working and you're trying to do everything you can do, and you still need help and you can't get it because you you have a job, you know, and that's so aggravating. It is. It is. It's very aggravating. I mean, Christy Belk said, uh, "Spare the rod, spoil the child." Mm-hmm. Heard that a lot, and and I've heard that a lot in my life as well. Uh, Bernadette said, a, uh, I had a good switch tree. Came back to better after the goat ate it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. MC Hammer performed at the Temple Theater after he was a student at NAS. I did not know that. Joe Collins said that. I didn't know that either. Never heard that. Wow. Uh, That's interesting. I didn't know he was a student at NAS. I mean. Didn't know that. Just... Learned a little bit this, this morning. Yeah. Let's see here what else is going on. Uh, a New York library is saying now that they will keep the Dr. Seuss book. Mm-hmm. but as long as it's in good condition. They're not doing away with it. But as we all know, you can't buy a new copy now, so they'll run out eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, we were discussing the eBay. You know, people are trying to sell yeah. the books on eBay. Well, eBay has stopped that. They won't allow people to sell them now because um, I think it said that it of the content of the book was not appropriate. Now, I said, don't you know that there's many, many more inappropriate or inappropriate Correct. things inappropriate things being sold on ebay and as i said yesterday there is going to be another platform come along Mm -hmm. of these people that are are doing this to where it comes up and uh they'll be replaced that will happen it ain't gonna happen overnight but Mm -hmm. expect that let's see what else is happening here joe these are those headlines we go huh joe exotic calls out his husband for neglect he's not Mm -hmm. paying him enough attention while he's in prison I didn't know he had a husband. He's got one. Mm. He does. And, I uh, that other husband, or his husband. He moved has, on to another pasture. He probably has. Yeah, I would imagine. 20, he's going to be there a while. Mm. Just to say. And, you know, here's the next question of this. Uh, a, uh, what, Cedric, the entertainer, who's a, a comedian, is saying that, and how do y'all feel about this? Bill Cosby, they're mm-hmm. saying that he deserves credit for Black History Month because he's done so much for entertain, the entertainment history, mm-hmm. despite what he was arrested for and put thrown in jail over. Mm-hmm. Do you think that kind of cancels out when you become a predator? Yeah. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I mean, they're not giving, I mean, everybody's so down on Donald Trump. I'm, I'm gonna go, I know I'm switching the subject, but, you know, he, look how much he's done for America, and they ain't looking, you know. But so. he's in jail. He'll be there probably. I, don't think, I, I, I was so disappointed when I heard all that, because I watched Bill Cosby. Because he was just like the all-American yes, guy. Yes, I watched him on this show. I watched him on, um, wasn't he the kids say the darndest things? Oh, guy? he was on Fat Albert. I mean, yeah. we grew up with, hey, yeah, hey, I hey. Mean, it was such a disappointment to think. And I, I mean, I know people ain't perfect, but this was, this was way, <laughs> you know, because then they claim that he drugged women. Yes, he and did. And then, yeah. That was just a uh, bombshell. Of right course, there. he was the Jello man for I don't know right. how many Jell-O years. Right, Jello pudding pops. Yeah, and the pudding man shouldn't be doing things like that. No. So that's in headlines, but they're saying maybe that he's not getting enough credit. Do you remember the lady that left her child uh, yeah. in the street and they arrested her? She's uh, already out of jail. They've released her. That's the <laughs> first picture that they've gotten out of that. Uh, Daily Mail got that as she's walking out of the jail cell there. I mean, what do you think? Where's the child? I wouldn't give it back uh, to her. Uh, the child services has it. I don't know what will become. I hope of she don't they, end up back with the child. Yeah, and they, they haven't awful. said whether or not they know who the father is or not. Mm. But uh, we certainly hope that child gets taken well care yeah. of. Uh, the people that were killed at the border uh, in the head-on wreck. Uh, here's a picture of how they got into the United States. They uh, went through this hole there in the fence, drove into the country, and then mm. had a wreck. Don't know mm-hmm. if they could drive or not, but. Uh, well, I mean, you got 27 people or how many ever in the vehicle. I yeah. can imagine you couldn't see very well. I know you wouldn't be able to see behind you. No, you couldn't. <laughs> so. uh, in California yesterday, I don't know if you saw this, they had a uh, train derailment, 40 cars wrecked in the desert there of California. Look at that pile up. Mm. I don't believe anybody was hurt, but uh, still, that's a pretty big deal there. 
but yes, it's awful. Uh, let's see. And, and here's more of the cancel culture mm -hmm. uh, of what's coming up. Uh, Judge uh, Thomas, Clarence Thomas, his documentary has been pulled from Amazon. I is that right? No, it is not right. I mean, because we all know why. Yeah. I mean, because he's conservative and... Yeah, if you're you conservative, know. you get your stuff pulled. Right. But that's happening in, in America today. It just, I just, I don't agree with that either. And I, I think there's a lot of people that won't either. So, something to think on there. I wish somebody would pass a bill that anything that has to do with any kind of, like, racial stuff, you know. I mean, because we've got shows on TV that's blatantly correct racist um and that are still allowed to be played so i mean i just think if you're going to do away with some things that really to me you've got to be you're saying across on, the board it, it does it needs to be an across the board thing i mean you don't need to single out you know just conservative people or just conservative groups or anything which is what it seems like you know um so i have a question what is that a cross on your neck uh-huh it is. is it turned sideways yeah it's sideways on the the thing Okay, so it's made that way. Yeah, it's okay. on the chain. Because I kept looking at it thinking, something's odd there. Sometimes it gets out of whack. On my, yeah, okay. well, it I, is. All the others I've ever seen just gone up and down, but you got yeah. sideways. Yeah, one of my kids gave me this. Okay. Um, and so, yep. That's new to me. Yeah. I learned a little something there. Well, as you get ready for the weekend, we all know, well, you got to have these because every one of us do, and that's groceries. That's Joe at the Piggly Wiggly of Collinsville. Invite you out. There's so much to choose from. A very clean store. Uh, you don't feel scared when you're there. Yeah. It's a nice neighborhood. Drop in and see them there. This week, fresh tomatoes, $1.99. Are you good at cutting them up? Tomatoes? Yeah. I've it, made a with mess. With the right knife, I will say. <laughs> I've tried to do it with a dull knife. If you've got a really sharp knife, that's the key. You yeah. smash them if you don't. If you're on a diet, these are handy to have around so that you won't eat junk food and move over to the Little Debbie counter there. Yeah. California oranges, three ninety nine mm -hmm. for that four pound bag. You can get the uh, sweet potatoes, the Mississippi ones, mm -hmm. fifty nine cents a pound. Also, the celery sticks, a dollar ninety nine uh, there. Onion, sixty nine cents a pound. If you're going to be doing some cooking for flavoring, chicken noodle soup. Whenever you got, to always got to have five or six cans of this in the cabinet in case you get sick because yes. chicken noodle is it. It does. It helps. I mean, it's good, good stuff. Thing. Squeeze yeah. ketchup there. Heinz ketchup, two for six dollars. Along with the Skippy peanut butter, one of your favorites there. Mm -hmm. Do you like the kind that has the uh, the uh, the nuts in it? I don't. My kids, everybody else in my house loves the crunchy. I don't. <laughs> I just like creamy. All right. As we go here, of course, sugar. you got to have that for just about anything that you're cooking or coffee or mm -hmm. sweet tea. Must have it. Along with the uh, the blue plate. Now, you know, it's, he carries both kinds. If you go across the border there and you're Miracle Whip, he's got that also. Right. But we but got you a sale on Blue Plate this I week. I love Blue Plate, though. That's my favorite. And especially when you get into summer and you got the tomatoes, tomato sandwiches. Do you yeah. eat tomato sandwiches? No, I don't. Oh, my gosh. You're missing out. Am I? Yeah, it's good. Fried green tomatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two for $6 there on that Blue Plate, though. You can get the crackers for a dollar box, the Piggly Wiggly brand. And, of course, as we get into steaks of the weekend, twelve ninety nine a pound for the family pack there when you get into ribeye steaks. You can also get the, the leg quarters. They're great on a grill also. Four ninety nine for that uh, for a 10-pound bag there is check that out. As we've got the the assorted pork chops, $1.39 a pound. Great, great. Love pork chops also. Yes. And if you're going to be having uh, 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 potatoes, mm -hmm. got to have some butter to put up in it. I know. Do it right. And, of course, Coca-Cola products and plenty of drinking water at the pig there. Check it out. Drop in and see Joe and his friendly staff at the Piggly Wiggly of Collinsville. They'll help you. They'll certainly save you a lot of money when it comes to your groceries. See them today in Collinsville. Take a left at the four-way stop and find the Piggly Wiggly of Collinsville. Now, let's go back to radar. I've gotten a couple of little bumps there that said uh, rain is approaching. Uh, it's thin. Let me turn this off so we can take a look here at radar. It's not going to be, uh, there was a couple little just bumps of possibly a little bitty sprinkle early, early this morning here. But radar is not picking that up. Okay. It's minute. We back out. Let's take a look at the state. All looks good. Out here to the northwest here, uh, due west of Jackson, Monroe, Louisiana, we've got showers today uh, up into El Dorado. And then this is the area that we'll get the rain today from Lafayette down to New Orleans. We, we'll be good. Tyler, Texas, we're going to get uh, a cloudy sky today in 70 is where we'll be so nothing to be worry nice. about slight chance of rain tonight mm -hmm. not going to be anything to it and then we're back with uh, 63 tomorrow and 66 on sunday 
I got to work tomorrow for just a little while. So On hair? Yeah, they're having the dusty lead out tomorrow night. Oh, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm glad it'll be, hopefully it'll be no rain for that, like we said. So, um, but yeah. It's a bunch of girls get to be involved in that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I've got a couple that I got to do tomorrow, so. All right. Well, everybody have fun at the Dusty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope yeah, that's a, a good turnout mm-hmm. for everybody. And we have to say a, uh, a a big thank you to everyone who watched this morning. We appreciate it. Always like and follow. Uh, you have mm-hmm. to follow to get notifications. Uh huh. And share it. Yeah. We love when you share because it gets the word out. And, it does. Um, and a lot of these news things, like we talk about, you know, people you, wouldn't know it if they didn't. You don't you know, hear it nowhere else. Like I said, they don't watch it on TV sometimes. So. Yeah. Anyway, so, we thank appreciate you for, all of yeah. you. Uh, anything I'm, we're forgetting? I don't think so. Um, just go out to Why Not. It's tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight yes. At Why Not. And I, I want to say a special thank you to all. I posted last night about my little fella JJ passing uh, away. And uh, I want to say thank you to everybody. that uh, He was such a, a part of all this. He was it, either under the table, on the table, at any time that there was weather with me. He stayed under my feet. When we would do the knees a lot of times. And yeah. he followed me up the stairs every morning. I mean, just sweet. And he looked like a little tornado going around in a circle <laughs> when we'd get ready to finish. Because it so was sweet. all about a treat. Mm-hmm. His, was, his life revolved around, am I going to get one now? Did I do something good? My little boy just fell apart when I told him. You know, I told you that. Alden was just, mm, same. And my behind me here is is my big dog back here, and she's just uh, she's distraught. She's Safety. just lost without without the, because her job in life was to let JJ get out into the yard, into the open, and yeah. go after him and knock him down. Oh uh, yeah. They played all day, and uh, bless her heart, she's uh, she's lonesome without it. But I do appreciate each one of you. Dogs mm-hmm. just are, are a part of your family. Yes. And uh, the little fella just he uh, he constantly looked for other ladies. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that's what he was doing when he got in trouble. He went down uh, the road and walked out in the middle of 495. And he's a little, little bitty fella. Little and they never saw him. Yeah. And uh, they come to me and told me the accident happened. We got him. And uh, it's just heartbreaking. I don't care who you are. Mm, it is. So I had a little uh, funeral service there in the rain for him back there behind the house. And uh, just uh, kind of a lost feeling without you, buddy. It is. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you've lost... It's like you've lost one of your little kids yeah, and, and your friends. I mean, you know, it's just it's sad. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you for all the kind words uh, that were said. Uh, I appreciate mm-hmm. you so much. I'll be back at some point today to give you uh, tips on what's going on across the nation. Of course, always weather updates throughout the weekend, and then you and I get back together on Saturday. Yeah. On Sunday, on Monday is mm-hmm. when it is. I'm trying to remember Monday. the date. It's Monday. Monday. <laughs> Monday, yes. So uh, mm-hmm. take care, and I hope you have success with all the hair doings that you do Thank this weekend. And let us know how the diet goes, because weekends are even harder, aren't they? I don't know if I'm going to make it, Scotty Ray. I just don't know. I don't know if I can do this. You know what I saw? <laughs> let me show you what I, I took I don't like over. to be hungry, like starving, and that's how I feel like I'm starving all the time. I don't know if I still got this picture. I, I may not. I was in, and maybe I don't. I don't. I don't still have it. Mm-hmm. I took a picture. Uh, have you ever heard of chocolate uh, frosted flakes? No. Uh-uh. I saw that. I don't think I want to see them either. I'd gone to buy a battery. I'd gone to buy a battery for the tractor, and, and I, I was walking through, and I saw that, and I just had to stop and look at it. I thought, ooh, yuck. Yeah. But I went on and got my battery. I bet they would be good, though. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't need to try them because I might <laughs> like them. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us, and we'll be back uh, Monday morning together to give you all the latest news and things that happen. Don't forget 22nd Avenue in Meridian on Monday morning, that right-hand lane going into downtown, the North Elm Lane, will be blocked. It'll be one lane into Meridian. Failed to yes. mention that. They're working there on the Children's Museum there, and we'll have one lane blocked off. Mm-hmm. I think they're doing the curves and the drive in, the, the, um, the drive that goes into it. Right. So. so expect a little delay there on Monday. All right, we'll uh, see you bright and early Monday. Scotty Ray's Weather is brought to you by 